Hi, friends. Rachel LaForce here. Your your favorite, your fur 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 your favorite comedian and spiritual teacher. I am going to be doing a little bit of a card read, maybe one card, maybe three cards. I don't know what they've got in store for us. Um, but I know that whatever this message is, has been wanting to come through for a little bit. I've been su- feeling like super uncomfortable in my body, which is typically what I can tell that something's like wanting to come through. So I'm excited to see what this message is. Um, if you are an astrology girly, you know that Mercury retrograde is upon us again, which is nothing to be scared of. Everybody will give you a different opinion or you're like, Rachel, isn't that what white women blame their problems on? that you would also be correct. Uh, but there is some, some very real lessons to learn. I like the idea. It's really a review process, right? So if you think about, uh, in business, anytime it's like, okay, you are coming up on your six month review or your yearly review. This is the time to look back and go, what are the processes that worked? What didn't work? And a lot of times, depending on where mercury is, uh, meaning this is a lot of things in astrology, but it will be reflecting different lessons. So if it's a, if it's a Venus mercury retrograde, then that means Venus is all about like love and relationships and abundance. So that may be that that's what we're observing. So, uh, mercury is the planet of communication. So that's why a lot of times they say back up your computer. Computers, don't sign any big contracts. Again, if you do, the world will not end. It's just about mindfulness. That's what I always really love about Mercury retrogrades is I find that a lot of that uncomfortableness that I go through, so, so if I do, but I, I always do. Mama's ruled by the moon. Wow, is it true? Um, and so I like to use that as a reflection of what's going on and how could I use that to my highest. So we're just going to kind of keep that in mind as we go through this card read. But uh, as always, if this is the first time that you watch, uh, I'm just going to close my eyes and pull a card here for us and see what comes through. So if you are um, of the prayer type, I encourage you to kind of think about a question, something that's going on, hold that for yourself and let's see what happens. Here we go. Hmm. Okay. We like these. Very beautiful. All right. Oh, I need that. There we go. Is this why I don't like props? You know what I mean? Too many things to move around. I'm a lady of the theater. Not sure if you know, but props, not for me. Okay. I pulled two cards because as I was, you know, kind of in that channeling space and see what was coming up and there wasn't a lot, which is never like, um, a problem, but it kind of felt like this space of, um, you know, you know, I don't know if you're a person of prayer or spirituality or where you're at, but sometimes we, it's the same need. Um, Ooh, now it's all coming in. So, you know, um, like if you're in a relationship with somebody and you text them and then it's like those bubbles pop up and then, then nothing. And you're like, what, what were they going to say? What were they going to say? Right. And then you're hanging on that rather than just being like, uh, maybe they just went on to something else or maybe they, you know, or maybe it's, it's just for me. And sometimes then we allow that to become obsessive. Sometimes we do that in whatever we're pursuing on an, uh, as I define them, earthly politics, right? Meaning, uh, maybe you're looking for this new job and you're calling that in, or you're wanting to manifest more money or manifest relationship. And we go through these periods where, as I define it, there's not a lot coming through, meaning if you're a person of prayer or however you meditate, and there's not really a lot of clarity. And sometimes that can be frustrating for us. And I've liked to redefine those periods because, you know, if it's this idea that we're co-creating, as I define it, I believe that I'm co-creating with the universe uh, or God, meaning that there is a plan for my life and I get to participate. I get to participate in that of what it is that I want to keep doing that's not in my highest versus what I want to go for that is available to me, right? So 
when we are in those places where we feel like those bubbles popped up and then they went away, it's that it's like, well, it's our turn now. It's our turn. So we typically know what it is that we need to be doing. We know what it is that we need. And, um, you know, for those of us here in the States, we're going into winter and, you know, into that, this idea of hibernation and incubation and, and what is that, what does that mean? And how can we allow ourselves to soften during this time and just sit with those questions and sit with those things that haven't revealed themselves yet? And something that came up with me this morning was just like, stick with the plan. Like, I'm guessing if you're watching this, whatever the burning question was, like, you already have a plan. You already know what it is. It's probably that, no, what's happening is because you're second guessing the plan, right? And whatever that means to you. So that's what I really love about these two cards is I feel like they're a little bit of dealer's choice, but there's a lot of potency here. So the first one was, what if your strangeness is actually your brilliance? This is the moon card, duality, hidden gem, secret power. Now, if you've been following, you know that my, it's kind of hard to focus in on the camera. There we go. Uh, you know that my whole mission is to help us uncover our shame, to reclaim our most unique gifts, or as I define it, your misfit light. What is the thing that has made you feel like an outcast, a misfit? You can't do it. Second rate. Everybody else gets it. I don't. That's kept you in these cycles of, of chaos rather than stepping into your light where you are living from a place of ease, of creativity, of service, of giving back. Uh, and you're welcome to that, even in the most difficult times, right? Even when things are not ideal, that that frequency, that feeling is always available to us. It's always, always available to, available to us, right? So if you're a person of um, more traditional religion, right? You had the idea of like, God never abandons us, right? It's that same thing. That frequency, that ability to tap into something higher than yourself is always there. It's always available to us, right? So even in these times, like right now, where you may feel that spiritual desert, those things aren't coming through those, you know, the um, text bubbles are popping up and nothing is there. There's so much there still, right? We, we don't need every single piece of the puzzle all the way through. Trust that when you aren't receiving, you are in fact receiving because you're being asked to receive yourself. And that's so much of this, that what if your strangeness was actually your brilliance? What are the things, what are those stones that you still have not unturned? Meaning we have this respite, we have this winter time of sticking with that plan. And then also what I love about this card is that it's that secret power. How can you dig deeper? not meaning productivity. Now I got to do more. I got to get more pieces of content out. I got to, you know, I've got to stay later at the office so they know I really want it. Or I should text that person a seventh time without them responding because then they'll really know I mean it, right? That's a different frequency. That's not what I'm talking about here, my friends. What I'm talking about is again, the moon, right? The moon shines anyway, whether it's behind a cloud or otherwise, it's like, going, ah, excuse me. Hi, I'm the moon and I'm here. Okay. Can you see me? That's not what the moon does. Okay. So it's that same idea. It's like, how can you, I love on this card too, that they both just have their eyes closed and it's this very just soft energy. There's these books that are open. Uh, one book is closed. One book is open all the way. One book is open uh, slightly. And so to me, again, it's that feeling of like, what is your secret power? What are the parts of yourself? What is this misfit aspect of yourself? that we need to dip into even more. What else is there? What else? What else? What else? That doesn't mean we're going to act on all of these things right now. It doesn't mean that we need to do anything with them. But allow this sense of rest to be exploratory. Allow the sense of rest to be the time when you get to do your own, like, I keep seeing like paleontologists. My son also loves dinosaurs. That's probably a lot of it. But like excavation, like what are the parts of yourself that you have lost due to covering up your misfit light due to that shame, due to, I need to be like everybody else. I need to do it like everybody else. And, you know, for a lot of us as creators, as artists, it's like, if it's not working, is it because you're trying to do somebody else's work? That's never gonna be the ticket, right? So that's this one. And then, um, let me read in here what it says. Number four, that's eight. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Number four, the moon 
duality, hidden gem, light and darkness, secret power, 444. The affirmation spell, I am discovering magic treasure hidden within me. What I also love about this word of magic, if you haven't, go back and listen to the bonus December episode on the Rachel LaFore show. Um, If you're watching this here on YouTube, you can also watch it on YouTube or go find it on Spotify, Apple, and all the places. It really speaks to a lot of these same ideas. So if you're really feeling that this is your message, definitely go and listen to that. There's a lot there for you. There's something about yourself or your life that you have been judging harshly a characteristic, a perceived flaw, personality type, or secret interest that has become an insecurity. Mm -hmm. Perhaps something that makes you different, a misfit. Something you believe to be a negative in your life. Maybe this thing has caused others to have a negative opinion of you. This has caused you to want to hide or diminish it. The universe is asking you to reconsider this question and narrative. There is a gem that needs your recognition to shine. Let's read that again. This doesn't say that this will only work when other people notice you. Okay, let's see this again. There is a gem that needs your recognition to shine. Will you polish it, letting it unleash its powers? It is so much to offer and teach you. This weakness you could have actually could actually be your strength. What if it could lead to a huge awakening? What if this trait that seemingly hinders you actually helps you in much more profound ways? What if you could learn to embrace, accept, and love it instead? Only then can you be fully realized and empowered by it. Often our gifts may be disguised as trash. We may see our blessings as curses, even though they have so much magic to give us and others. There is duality to everything. This is a manifestation enhancer. Ooh. Connect and meditate with the moon about what your secret treasure is. The moon is a friend for the lonely and misunderstood parts of ourselves. Practice accepting the quirky parts of you that you resist. When you do, they may just lead you to interesting places, lead you to create unique and fascinating things, lead you to feel more whole than you've ever felt. Oof. Could you imagine? Lead you to feel more whole than you could have, than you've ever felt. Almost nothing is more valuable than this. This is worth much more than the opinions of others. I pulled a second card, but I think that's it, baby. That's it. Oof, 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 oof. Yes. Go forth, prosper. I trust that this message finds you. As always, please connect with me in all the places. You can DM me on TikTok, Instagram. You can email me, rachel at rachellaforce.com. Let me know how these are working for you, what's coming up for you. I have going into 2024, I'm going to be hosting uh, a bi-weekly, um, basically what we're, we're doing here, um, a little spiritual sermon uh, every other week on Sundays at uh, Phoenix and Dragon in Sandy Springs. That's going to be happening. I've got places that you can come and watch me do uh, spiritual comedy as I define it. Lots of stuff and ways to connect. We're going to be going on the road next year as well. So let me know what city you're in and how uh, where you want us to come uh, see you and visit. We would, we would absolutely love to do that. Lots of big things on the horizon. And for now, I'm going to heed the advice of this moon card and I'm going to sit with the parts of myself that still want to fill me up. So um, I'm excited to see what you discover. All right. Love you. Mean it.